Hello everyone, this is Hatef Khaledi, the Senior Production Engineer at uh, Turbulent Flux and uh, in this video, which is really the very first video of a series of videos I'm going to show you how to set up a model and how to run a simulation inside Flux Applied but before that, let me quickly introduce the Turbulent Flux uh, Turbulent Flux is an engineering company based in Oslo, Norway and it has its own uh, unique in-house transient multi-phase flow simulator we have been developing it uh, since 2015 and 16 uh, and the flux applied is basically a user-friendly interface a web interface that is uh, generated uh, basically to make uh, and build models uh, to manage the simulations and visualization to set up data filtering and data analytics and uh, machine learnings to set up optimization procedures and uh, several scenarios and advisory systems such as slug analysis and stability advisors, wax depositions and etc and etc and also on top of everything the virtual flow metering uh, but let's get back to our simulation, the very first uh, simulation and uh, how to set up a model. I have already created a base case. I have created a simulation model, which is simply a geometry of a well. You can see the well schematic here. It's a tubing of 4 inch and then uh, it's surrounded by casing 7 inch all the way to MD 5285 and a casing of 9 inch, which is extended only to MD of 1200. This is my very simple geometry I have already created in my uh, demo uh, revision 1 and you can see the geometry here in the first page and uh, but let's just edit the base case and go through each step and see how it is really created when I click on the edit base case on the left side you see several options uh, you see simulation control, trajectory, material definition pipe and wall definitions, pipings, ambient conditions, the boundary conditions of your numerical simulation, the sources you might have, the reservoir contacts at the bottom, the valves, the wax options that probably you are we are going to show you in the next videos, and the text editor and the test run. But let's start from the top, the simulation control, uh, it's the time integration and also the fluid properties. So. The time integration, we are going to start the simulation at time zero. The simulation end time, I'm going to run this simulation for two hours. I have specified it at seconds and the time step of 50 seconds. The fluid file is already generated in any uh, PVT package and it's uh, simply converted to H5 format. And I have dragged and, uh, dragged and dropped it here to upload the file. And you can see that the file is already uploaded. And here in output, I have chosen to uh, plot my results uh, every 100 seconds. And here in the restart, uh, you can use a restart file. You can basically run your simulation or start your simulation from another simulation. And then you can simply upload your restart file here. In the trajectory section, you have two options. You have MDTVD or XYZ. Uh, XYZ. And you have uh, different interpolation techniques to smooth, uh, smooth out your curve or your geometry. Uh, you either use your predefined discrete uh, XYZ or uh, MDTVD or you use the cubic SP line or linear interpolation to, as I said, to smooth your curve. Uh, also, you can generate your file in Excel. You may have your data in Excel as MDTVD and you can simply import it from Excel choose your your excel file and click ok and this will automatically generate here you see i have md tvd starting from zero actually the md and it goes down all the way to 5200 uh, you see that my geometry uh, has a horizontal part which uh, resembles the the x x uh, christmas tree on the top and then it's more or less vertical and then in the shape that you see here in this picture then it comes the material definitions, which is mostly used for heat transfer calculation inside the uh, the flux applied and the, the core technology. Uh, of course, I have a pipe that is uh, made of steel. It has its own conductivity and density and heat capacity, as you see. 
and then it comes the brine which you may have between your casing and tubing and also between the casings then you have formation uh, the reservoir uh, property the reservoir formation characteristic you have its own conductivity density and heat capacity and then probably you may have cement uh, between your casings or the other materials that you can find it in the library that you have already defined or you can define it yourself then it comes the pipe definition uh, as i said my geometry is very simple it consists of just one piping um, actually two pipings one at the top horizontal and then one tubing of four inch all the way to the bottom of the well and uh, the four inch to meter is simply 0.1016 uh, and it has its own thickness and the material is of course steel then it comes the wall definition I have two walls uh, actually I have two walls as I showed in this picture uh, let's start with the first wall that is extended all the way to 1200 meter so after the tubing you have a, a space between your tubing and the first casing that is filled with brine and then the casing of its own thickness and then a, a second layer of brine and then the formation that is simply generated here you see the brine of a thickness of 0.025 and the thickness of the casing 7 inch and the brine between casing 7 inch and 9 inch and then the casing of 9 inch thickness and then the formation of 10 meter that I have divided to several sections and then the second wall starts from 1200 meter and it consists of only the brine and the casing and then the formation and as you see I have brine I have steel which is the, the thickness of the casing 7 inches and then the formation of 10 meter that, that I have divided to several sections and the last part comes the piping uh, and the piping actually as I said it starts this is the starting MD position I have the horizontal pipe that starts at zero it is a horizontal pipe I defined it in the pipe definition and I have chosen to have the insulation of 10 with the roughness of 5 E minus 5 and then the second piping comes the casing 9 I've called it casing 9 again it has a tubing of 4 inch it starts at 36 to 36.4 and here I have chosen uh, for this uh, wall uh, wall 1 that I defined it in the previous section right the brine steel brine steel formation right and then it comes the last uh, piping uh, it is casing 7 I've called it it starts at 1200 meter I mean don't bother about the ordering the this one should come at the bottom but that's fine it doesn't matter really so it comes the casing 7 inch I've called it and then the piping of 4 inch again and the wall 2 that I have defined uh, in the previous section with the brine thickness steel thickness and the formation thickness right and the roughness of all is point uh, 0.0005 meter then the ambient condition is simply defined uh, I mean my horizontal section is uh, subject to the air with a temperature of 10 and the wind speed of 5 there is no water this is an onshore well and then it comes the formation uh, temperature gradient at TVD of 36.5 I have the temperature of 45 and then at uh, 2410 I have the temperature of 100 degrees that is simply the ambient uh, gradient temperature you can see it here as well it's visualized here and then you have the boundary condition as I said uh, I'm sure who are familiar with the numerical simulations they know that at the top you either have the close boundary or the pressure boundary uh, here I have chosen to have the pressure boundary I have called it press bound I have given it a label you can call it whatever you like and the pressure of this pressure boundary is 14 bar at time 0 and then the temperature of 301 Kelvin and also the phase distribution of uh, volume based standard condition with the phase distri distribution of gas uh, this is just for the backflow scenario when something happens and then you have a backflow at your uh, boundary 
uh, this is just a numerical setup and uh, you specified phase distribution of gas one again uh, those who have worked with the uh, other multi-phase flow simulator they are familiar with this concept of the backflow in the pressure boundary and why you are really putting the gas to one and then you might have source you might have for example i don't know you, you can have the gas lift you can specify a gas lift uh, a position and again the phase distribution either the total mass flow or the volume based uh, source of gas or anything else L let's talk about the gas lift uh, scenario uh, in the in the next videos i mean uh, here we are not going to choose the source for this simulation uh, then it comes the reservoir contacts uh, uh, i have the reservoir contacts you can either have a point flow or you can have a zone for simplicity i have chosen the point flow at md of 5285 is isothermal and injection is on and then it comes the reservoir conditions uh, you have the pressure of the reservoir 230 bar and also you have also the temperature of the reservoir which is 370 uh, you might uh, this reference tvd is uh, simply a reference tvd of your reservoir pressure if a client or if you give you this reference tvd you can put it here but if it's not provided just we leave it blank and that simply means okay let's say that uh, the pressure reservoir pressure is given at uh, i don't know 200 2500 and then you have put your reservoir contact at 2400 uh, the way that the reservoir pressure is then calculated at a given position is uh, just the interpolation of the pressure uh, between these two points and that is simply based on the static pressure of uh, or the column of the pressure the column of your fluid pressure in between these two points it's just a simple interpolation and then in the next section you have valves uh, i have called it production choke you can call it again whatever you like it is positioned at md20 i have the valve opening of 93 percent and then I have the valve model. You can either have hydro valves or you can have CV valve. This hydro valve is based on the CT. Uh, this, is a, this, is, this is a new valve model. This is, uh, we have chosen to use hydro valve here with the area of 0 0.025 and the relative area of uh, CT curve you can see on the right side. It starts with the opening of zero and it goes all the way to 100% with the relative area that you can see specified here then you have uh, more advanced options such as external data this is uh, really the data mapping uh, you can receive uh, some data from the client or from the cloud or from a, a data provider uh, and you can connect that data provider to your simulation through this uh, external data and data mapping we're going to show you this again in the next videos and uh, just we let this uh, simulation to be as simple as it is right now and then you have VAX options uh, I don't have VAX in this simulation but again we will come back to this in the next videos and then finally you have the text editor here in the text editor whatever you have specified so far in your GUI is gathered in a JSON uh, format uh, text uh, yeah the simulation control the start time uh, the end time the maximum steady state uh, iterations I mean the fluid that you uploaded the output uh, DT plot the trajectory I mean everything is gathered here you can see the pipings the reservoir contacts and also other parameters that you have uh, specified on the left side through the user interface um, this is an advanced option again those who are um, um, more advanced user may find this part the text editor more useful or more uh, or easier to work actually rather than the graphical user interface and then finally it comes the run uh, we run the simulations through this button uh, and then you just let the simulation run for a few seconds or few minutes depends on uh, 
your simulation and then once it's complete the status changes to complete I have already uh, done the simulations and here you can see like uh, other transient simulator you have both trend plots and the profile plots let's start with trend plots uh, under the trend you have uh, several parameters to visualize you have the density of your uh, tree face you have the external inflow which is the mass based uh, flow and it's uh, either it can be your source or it can be your reservoir contacts production you have the flow mixture density you have the mass flow STC or the mass flow of each phase you have the pressure you have the temperature you have the slug fraction you have the velocity of each phase again and also the volume flow and uh, you may have several other things uh, that you can see in the more advanced options but let's uh, look at the volume flow STC of oil for example and see how much oil for example we have produced uh, this is position zero this is at the bottom of the well but uh, you can see that once the simulation has reached a steady state we are producing uh, 8.14 uh, e to the power minus 3 standard uh, cubic meter per second of oil you can plot the same for gas and water you can plot uh, other parameters as well uh, but let's look at the profile plot as well let's plot the pressure for example so you see that the geometry is uh, shown by orange you see it is the bottom of the well and then it goes to the top and then this horizontal section at the top then this is the time let's move it a little bit further to the right until it reaches the steady state and you see <clears throat> the pressure of 225 bar at the reservoir position or the bottom of your well and then going all the way to 14 bar to your pressure boundary the same goes with temperature you can plot your temperature as well and you see that uh, the temperature starts at 370 Kelvin and then it goes to 361 yeah I mean uh, that's it that's how you set up your simulation that's how you specify your trajectory your material your pipes your ambient conditions, the boundaries, the sources and reservoir contacts, the valves, and that's how you really simulate and visualize your result. As I said, this was the, the first basic uh, uh, video. This was just to show you how our simulator runs a transient simulation, how we set up the model, and how we really run it. Uh, in the next videos, we will come back with more advanced uh, scenarios, we will come back with more advanced setup of the virtual flow metering and uh, uh, many, many other things that we have developed inside the Flux Applied. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Until next time.